Well, you're on an engineering quest, it seems. Yeah, exactly. This is what it's about. This is why we're called the engineering quest because you know we're trying to basically work our way towards um, systems and techniques which are best in the industry. I'm here with Steve, the MD at the Engineering Quest. Welcome to another Swarf and Chips. Now we're here near Sandy. Can yeah. you just give us a quick little intro about the company, please? Uh, yeah, so the Engineering Quest is basically a precision engineering company. Uh, we make a lot of uh, high-end components for our medical industry, the oil and gas industry. Uh, we've been about since 1967. You've grown a lot since then. You've got 80 machines on the shop floor. Yeah, 80 machines. We've got eight machines. There are about 63 CNC machines in total. Yeah. Brilliant. And you also you've got some quite old machines, like you've got an old sliding head here, which is still running and making some absolutely tiny parts. What parts is this machine making? Oh, uh, yeah, this is making old pharmacy surgical instrument parts. Um, um, yes, yeah, turning very, very small diameters down to uh, about 0.5 di diameter. And the reason why we're using this old machine is because it's been adapted by us for this job specifically. Okay, so this is obviously maybe a long running contract and you don't get these kinds of machines making these kind of small parts every day, do you? No, that's right. We started this about 25 years ago when BSE came along because they made these uh, tips disposable. Uh, we make about 500 a month. So uh, yeah, for us, uh, it's just a constant job. We're constantly making tips. Brilliant. Uh, they go over to our other site and uh, we do some other work using a uh, wire EDM machine. Brilliant. So uh, moving on from the old machines, you also recently bought two new Huachions from Ward High Tech. Now, yes. this, machi this machine already has one of your bottleneck signs on it, meaning this is actually critical to your business. It's only been on the shop floor for six months. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you know, with us at the moment, the, the business is expanding massively. Um, after the downturn, things really just went the other way for us. And uh, yeah, we're now, we're now basically just looking for more and more capacity to run more and more hours. and. Uh, yeah, this has become a bottleneck almost uh, instantly. Brilliant. So you can't make the, bot the parts quick enough? No, not at the moment. Fantastic. So we've also got another bigger Huachi on here also from Ward High Tech. Now, you bought these two at the same time, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, well, brilliant. Again, just trying to solve that capacity problem. Um, yeah, this machine is a Y-axis machine. Um, so it also, not only does it give us extra capacity, but it also expands our capability as well. Great. So what I like about your shop floor as well, though, is you mentioned most people talk about trying to trying to work the machines, but you talk about making sure that the operators are actually working to the best of their abilities, and that's why you've got quite a lot of old machines that are still running quite hard. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we don't look to run machines at 100%. We look to run machines, or we look to run machines most efficiently as possible, using the operator to the his maximum efficiency. So uh, one person could run a machine at say um, 80% and they can run another machine at say 60%, um, we still get a very good output from them. Whereas most people would think maybe you actually want to achieve 100% efficiency with just one machine, it's actually more important to make sure your operators can, can use lots of different machines and try and make use of them and you will run them all at the same time. For yeah, example. absolutely. And uh, you know, when you've got a lot of stuff that's actually bought and paid for, it doesn't matter if you just switch it off and leave it where it is. Yeah. Um, you know, For us, we want flexibility because the markets are moving all the time and the products that we're making are are changing quite regularly. Yeah, so you, the products you make, this is a, uh, what, can you explain what this kind of, this product is, please? Oh uh, yeah, this is the oil and gas industry and this ends up making a, a part for a flow kit, which is basically a, uh, a, a generator for a, um, a drilling tool, uh, for power generation. So that's kind of like an alternator that goes deep on the ground drilling parts. The stuff yeah, you exactly. make here can be found like deep on the ground for the oil and gas. Now that is really exciting. Yeah, I mean, we've got parts that are basically deep underground. We've actually got um, parts that are um, in satellite systems for um, for satellite for photography and satellite filming. And uh, and this is another oil and gas part. This is uh, like a drill a drill housing. Um, yeah, this is actually a, a, steer, a steering component for a uh, for a steering tool for um, directional drilling. So that's when they're trying to find uh, oil reservoirs deep underground, and that's being machined partly machined by your new FAMUP machine. Yeah, we actually had this machine a little while now, probably about uh, two, two or three years. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been machined on the FAMIC because the, the FAMIC is ideal because it's um, super rigid, uh, super high accuracy. Yeah, which is what you get from the linear drives. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. And also, it's quite a, quite a tough material to cut. It's P550 stainless. Do you do a lot of exotic materials? Um, yeah, we machine, um, well, tungsten carbide, polycrystalline diamond, um, all of the super alloys. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, super duplex, 
Um, you know, we're capable of uh, grinding tungsten carbide, uh, solid tungsten carbide parts. Which not and, many people can do. Uh, no, that's right. And, um, you know, we've, we've spent a lot of years specialising in that. Um, we use um, EDM technology for machining polycrystalline diamond for, uh, for valves for the oil and gas industry. Brilliant. And we've also just ended up at your, your other new Huachion lathe. And this is actually doing the, the roughing operations, is that correct, for the, for the steering unit in the, in the drill? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this machine is uh, equipped with uh, damp boring bars and a, uh, and a steady system. Because um, I guess when you machine those kinds of exotic materials, vibration is a real nightmare. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, what we're trying to do is get absolute rigidity because we're trying to machine this quite fast. You know, we're pushing the material as hard as possible, as you can see from the size of the chips in the machine. Um, we're yeah, those are huge. At, wow, look at those. Yeah, we're running at, um, seven millimetre at depths that. of cut on roughing. Yeah, so you're getting some really nice chips coming off here because I guess one of the other issues when you're, when you're machining kind of large materials, you, uh, tough materials to cut, you might be getting stringy swarf out. These chips are really important to make sure you don't get them clogging up the machine. Yeah, you need a machine with lots and lots of power. Um, you need, to, obviously, the right cutting insert. But, yeah, the idea is, is to basically push it as hard as possible. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've developed this and we've got the cutting time down from... I think four hours originally to rough this part down to two hours. That's brilliant. So obviously the development time, it's not just about the machine, it's about the experienced personnel as well. How do you keep make sure your operators are trained and, and, and have the, the best technology available to them and the best knowledge? Yeah, and we, we tend to work with uh, the machine tool vendor and also the uh, tooling vendors. Um, we've also got a very sophisticated CI system that allows us to keep on rolling any uh, information, any overruns or um, any improvements back into a, a knowledge base. Uh, that knowledge base is maintained by our engineering department. Yeah, so uh, this is one thing that we were talking about quite uh, extensively is your kind of your management system. It's not just people running machine tools, getting job cards through, scanning jobs out. It's all it's all about logging when they have a problem with overrun setup times, with uh, tools they can't find, and it's all about trying to improve that and make build on those little efficiencies to try and be stay competitive. Yeah, because that constant pro improvement process is uh, critical to the business. It's a, a core part to the business and we're just trying to constantly um, roll any new information, any new knowledge or suggestions back into the, uh, into the company, into the business. And what else is critical to, critical to the business is the inspection department, which we've just walked into now. And you've got a CMM machine, which uh, we did see running, um, inspecting one of your, uh, the steering, that steering uh, drill part. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not running right now, but you were running this unmanned, obviously, inspecting your parts. Do you unmanned uh, uh, inspect most of your parts? Uh, yeah, exactly. Everything has to go through an inspection process of one type or another. And, uh, you know, we try to sort of like map out all of our uh, um, variability in the process. Uh, and we roll that back into a, um, you know, a full um, inspection method process, um, which tells us all of our frequencies. So what you like is, is proceduralizing the manufacturing process. Yeah, that's right. Collect the data and then um, analyze it and then put it all into a procedure that gives you full control uh, in the long run. And uh, yeah, obviously you can uh, strip cost out in that way as well. So you don't have to inspect everything 100%. And that's how you maintain quality and consistency. Uh, absolutely, yeah. So you're looking for you know machines that are you know stable, processes that are stable, and then eventually you can actually um, try and uh, reduce your overall inspection frequency. Brilliant. So inspection. So you've got top class inspection, top class machining process management, and also top class machines. Yes, exactly. And also, let's not forget top class operators as well. Top class operators and you know a management system that basically uh, creates that core of uh, of uh, systems and uh, processes. Brilliant. So. Obviously, we've seen that your, your business, you, you've tried to improve in every aspect. You've, got, you've been investing in equipment, investing in people, investing in management systems. You're on an engineering quest, it seems. Yeah, exactly. This is what it's about. This is why we're called the engineering quest, because you know, we're, trying to, you know, we're trying to basically work our way towards um, systems and techniques which are you know, um, best in the industry. So can you tell me about the continuous improvement system, the notice board you've got set up here? Yeah, so, um, I mean, anybody can basically fill out a, uh, a CI ticket. Which is it one of these done, just down yeah. here. It can do be done using a paper system, or we've also got a, uh, an intranet system, uh, which is on your mobile, and you can actually fire up a CI ticket from your mobile and fill it out there, and it all gets added into the same system. Right. Um, and then basically it falls into three categories, um, which is a suggestion. Um, a QTEL, which is our technical application library, um, or a machine fault. And what this allows us to do is basically compile all of the issues that come from the shop floor into a database, 
and then we can do some analysis on it and find out what's going on. Right, okay. So not only do we get the good ideas and suggestions, but say for example, if we've had a problem with breaking a tip on P550, we can actually log the problem, log the solution, and put that all into the QTEL uh, database. Brilliant, uh, so I guess there's, when your machine is such a complex part such as this, there are so many variables involved in the process between the actual part, the material coming in, the grade of the material, making sure there's a lot of things that you don't really have control over and are quite hard to measure until you get on the machine. You maybe see it's cutting not as you expect. Yeah. These kind of things could, could start logging all those little problems that you might still be able to join the dots up and see actually, yeah. maybe our material suppliers not, maybe the, the grade isn't quite what we expect or the tips aren't working as we expect. So there's lots of different, uh, quite hidden problems that would be quite hard to see otherwise. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, we are um, trying to get all the information, gather all the information, get it all into a central data database as quick as possible. I Brilliant. Mean, that's what it's about for us. Brilliant. So, good top engineering management, top machines and top operators. You can't get much better than Engineering Quest. Thank you, Steve. No, thank you.